Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Heath Bar. I'm your host, Heath Johnson. Each week, I sit down with an artist, creator, or leader who lives or passes through the Black Hills area, kick back a few drinks, and chat about their story. There's some incredible people that surround us, and this is your chance to get to know more about them. From singer-songwriters, film producers, craft brewers, community leaders, and more, the Heath Bar serves up a healthy selection of chats on tap. You can find this and past episodes on iTunes Podcasts and Spotify as well. Just subscribe in the app and you'll know right when your conversation is ready for you. There's also blog posts about the episodes, links to find more info on the guests, merch, and my public schedule as well at heathbaronline.com. And get social with the Heath Bar. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram with at heathbaronline, or you can hunt me down on Twitter with just my name, at heathjohnson. And once again, for all you regulars and those that would like to be a regular here at the Heath Bar, you can donate to this podcast to keep it going uh, at heathbaronline.com. Just go to the Become a Regular page, and you can toss in whatever it is you would like, uh, whether it's a buck, two bucks, whatever it is. Uh, It helps keep this going and getting interesting people on the show for you to enjoy. My guest this week is Tyler David young 24-year-old out of Canton, South Dakota, East River, folks. Uh, Fun dude. I'm really glad he was in the area and we were able to connect and chat. Uh, I've known him little less than a year. I uh, bumped into his name through another buddy of mine who was also on the show a few episodes back. You might remember Craig Winchrist. Uh, told me I should check the guy out, and he came out, uh, played the Wild West Songwriters Festival in Deadwood this past year with us. Uh, super great that I got to meet him and that he came and did all that. Um, we had a fun chat. I could have talked to this guy all day, uh, but he had things to do. I had things to do, and uh, he was playing that night at Dakota Point Brewing. So uh, we chatted for a while, talked music, talked a bunch of other stuff, and uh, then we sent him on his way. Uh, if you haven't heard of him yet, uh, you should, and I'm sure you will at some point. Uh, his ultimate goal is to write songs and take care of cows. Um, so South Dakota is the perfect place for him to end up staying and sticking around. Um, I won't get into the conversation much more, folks. Uh, I know you're going to love it. I enjoyed chatting with him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's Tyler David. Welcome to the Heath Bar, where the conversations are always on tap. Welcome. Let's do a, let's do a coffee cheers. There we go. Early morning at the Heath Bar. Absolutely. One day I'll uh I'll have a. N- unempty bottle of whiskey and we can pour some into this coffee but for some reason the whiskey never that. makes it through the night man it's not supposed to that sounds like a lyric hey it, there's a song i'm gonna put that in my notes <laughs> real do quick. It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly yeah dude well i'm glad you're back out here yeah. west river west river from uh where, what city are you or town are you in um canton so you're just in south canton. of sioux falls like 20 30 minutes okay yep okay i got gotcha. you yeah yeah and i uh I didn't even know you existed until a little under a year. It hasn't even been a year. Since um, the songwriter? Well, before that, um, um, oh, who is it? I can't believe I'm, fr- I'm blanking on his name right now. <laughs> out in Sioux Falls. Um, I'm horrible with names. Yeah, he's a songwriter out there. God, he was on the show. Oh, Craig? Craig, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you know Craig, it's early. We Craig's haven't had enough dude. coffee yet. He's a um, good dude. Yeah, he was telling me he's like, "Hey, you got you got to check this guy out. He's going to be out and get him in." And yeah, so we hung out for the songwriters festival. And he's the first dude that I co-wrote with. Really? Yeah, because he Craig spent like seven years in Nashville. He did. Yeah. So he's kind of the the guy that kind of understood this crazy kind of dream, I guess. Yeah. He was there. Well, yeah. and he knows a lot. He was there. He was telling me he was there when the whole streaming services all came came alive. So yeah. Then, Songwriters had a really hard It was like time the end of the living. CD era yeah. going into the, we're not going to pay you <laughs> right. jack for this. You get yeah. nothing now, but we still want your songs. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Stay here, but we won't pay you. Yeah, so um, so you, what song did you write with them? Oh, Is we've it, had a, a whole bunch. Oh, like, it's been a few now? Okay. Yeah, gotcha. I think, and it's been a while. We had one that was pretty cool. It was, um, 
I wrote it for my grand, uh, my grandfather right before he passed away, and I got to like show it to him. Oh, cool! It, so it was super. It was That's super cool. cool. Yeah, because cool. he kind of grew up the same little farm area in like Alcester, so around Canton. So like, I don't know, the same kind of farm family background sure. and everything. So it was really sure. fun to write that. That's cool. How big is Canton? Uh, only like a couple thousand. Oh, so not big at all. No, really. No. So you kind of grew up. This I think farm I had like fifty kids in my class or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like it was just the right amount. That's small, man. You knew everybody, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a fan of the small towns. I always have been. I grew up in. Dude, I would never raise a family in the city. Oh, ever. I, just, I don't know. I don't know how. I it's mean, stupid. It's a whole different world. It's yeah. like you know, you you think of well, we're on one planet, but there are multiple worlds, man. <laughs> It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I went to college in the city, and I came from a town of 128 people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so that was, uh, I mean, it was just like. It's culture shock. Not even the same planet, yeah. but it's in the same state. It's still Nebraska. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, when I went from Canton to Belmont to mm-hmm. school, I mean, it was crazy. Just like the difference in like pace of lifestyle. and. What did know. you notice most? Like other than the pace, was it like, because you came from this small town. Yeah. I guess from, like, a small town of everybody being friendly, like, big city, sometimes people suck. <laughs> I think that's the first thing you that I learned. You can't say hi to people. No. They don't wave at you No, you, you can't, like, them. yeah, it's it's weird, like, you're in a grocery store and see a cute little baby or something, you can't, like, yeah. you know, like, go say oh, yeah, hi. Oh, like, you're weird. Yeah, they'll think you're weird as hell. Leave my kid that. alone, man. Yeah. I just don't, I don't know. People, people don't do just, that. They no. don't want to, they don't want to be friends. They don't like conversation no, either. No, no, they don't. They don't. If they do, it's, it's, like efficient and to the point like this is the information i need give me the information and then i'm yeah. moving on i'm yeah. not sitting down to get to know you or hang out or anything uh-huh. like that um and if i do get to meet you it's because i swipe right on tinder or something Ooh, like that like, <laughs> yeah <know? laughs> i'm not looking to make friends i don't know it's it's different like i and i've i've got friends that live in the city obviously people make friends in the city yeah but... that is one cool thing is <sighs> you get a bunch of different people like i don't know the people that i met living down there i mean I wouldn't have met him anywhere else. I mean, it's just cool. It's like a melting pot. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and you went down there for school? Yeah, I was down there for school. And what did you go to school for? Uh, entertainment industry studies Ooh. and music business. Nice. So you've but got on, the... the, the uh, like the marketing promotion stuff, but... The adult I, side of the music industry. Yeah, the grown up. Uh, but I'm really not trying to use it. <laughs> There's like there's that. some good nuggets in, in knowing that information, though, oh, man. Oh, absolutely. Like, I tell you what. The, yeah. the business side of the music... Music scene is something I've. God, it's you, crazy. You think you know it, and then you don't. You're like, oh, I don't there's... think anybody really knows it because there's no rules to anything that's going on. Right. Here. It's like there's no set formula. It's not like any other regular business. Like, like A plus B equals C. No, yeah. There's no. There's none of that. It's like, hey, no. I happened to bump into this person, and now I've yeah. got something. Yeah. Going. Nobody really knows. That's the thing. That's mm-hmm. the best thing too to keep in mind. Like when people are giving you advice or critiquing you, mm-hmm. like. 98% of people that tell you anything don't know, like, <laughs> y- you know what I mean? Like, just don't know. Yeah. So, like, only, like, yeah. So, They're just sharing their experience. Yeah, exactly. And that's what worked for me. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah. like, you can't get caught in, like, the right or wrong. Just do it. Yeah, especially when it comes to, you went down there, well, you were writing songs before you went down there, right? Yeah. So you've been doing that for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's one of the things I've noticed with songwriting itself is... Oh, yeah. There is no, there's no formula. No. Unless you want to be on the top 40 radio. And then and it's that's like, not, ugh. that's not something you should shoot for. If you're yeah. in it for the money, there's a lot like more profitable businesses you should probably pursue. Yeah, you've got a, you've got a better odds yeah. at becoming a banker. Or yeah, exactly. Anything. You gotta Pick be, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go work at McDonald's and be a manager. You're going to make more money. They make great money. I know. Oh, my gosh. My dad, um... <laughs> For years, so he's he's done a lot of things in life. But when I was in college, he was uh, the store manager for the highest grossing McDonald's in America. I bet that Omaha, was Nebraska. Believe hell. it or not, yeah, like it was right by um, Rosenblatt where they did the College World Series, okay. and right by the zoo. Yeah, the, one oh. of the best zoos yeah. in the world. You know, I love that zoo. Oh, it was great. But <laughs> um, it was it's it was insane. Yeah, I was like you're what? Like, and he's like, yeah. And if you work here for like X amount 10 of years, years they yeah. give you a car they give uh-huh. you like you they tr- if you, but you got to get up there like if <laughs> yeah. you're just you gotta making fries on. you're not getting yeah. anything <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> but you got to start somewhere i guess um but yeah what, that was the thing with with songwriting though is 
especially when it's with how many different styles and what can come out. I mean, yeah, uh, different songs are gonna come, gonna come out and of you than it's gonna yeah. come out of me, and that's okay, you know. Yeah, it's got to be different. Well, and that's so when I went to Belmont, when I got in, I got in on songwriting, mm-hmm. and then I don't know, just like talking to some of the people and after taking some classes and stuff. That's kind of like the thought I had. Like you can't, nobody can tell you what's good and what's bad with your song. I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's just it's your song. Yep. It's, and if you like it, yeah, that's all really all that matters. Yeah, that makes it? a song. You know, it doesn't have to be something that thousands of people yeah. adore. But hey, if it puts something to, out of your head that you wanted to get out there, you know, and you never know. Some some people might dig some of the, some yeah. of the songs, and some of them won't. I've it's, got songs that people like. I've got songs that I will never let anyone <laughs> hear. Exactly. Well, you know but it's mean? good to get them all out, right? You got to yeah. do it. Yeah, um, that's one thing I've been trying to work on, like, in a set-wise, is, like, playing stuff that I like, stuff that I get into. Because if mm-hmm. I can't get into it, then how the heck is anybody else going to? Yeah. Like, especially, you know, like, when you're playing, like, those couple-hour sets and whatnot, like, it's hard to do that sometimes. But, like, whenever you have, like, an hour set, like, it's nice to, like, just challenge yourself to write down, like, 10, 12 songs that you like. Yeah. And, only you want to play. Yeah. Like, not worry about anything else. Do you um, Do you ever take requests? <clears throat> I'm really bad at it. Yeah? I'm really bad at it. I got a buddy of mine, every time he goes to play, he goes, and if you have any requests, keep them to yourself, because we're running the show up here. And I like that. It's it's a good... <laughs> everyone laughs, you know, I, and yeah. keeps you, the crowd You fun. always, like, try, and, like, you always, like, yeah, I'll see what I can do, like, keep it open, like, yeah. with requests, but... I don't know. I always tell people the problem is I'll try to play it, and that's going to be it. your fault. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. I'm kind of like a, I don't know, a little bit of a perfect, like perfectionist with things. So like I like uh, to run through it and practice it. Sure. Like, I'm not just going to throw it out. Like, yeah, yeah. So what does your sets look like? Like when you when you put out a, a Tyler David set or yeah. show, are you looking at... Do you do, you do a lot of originals, I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, mostly originals. Okay. Like last night, I did... Like, all originals, and then I did, but I did, like, two, like, my favorite Ian Tyson song and, like, a Tom Russell song. Like, the okay. stuff that I really get into. Yeah. And, like, stuff that, like, also, like, inspires me to write. Sure. You know? Like, I think it's cool to, like, covers have a place. I really do think so. hmm Like, if you can put your own twist on a cover, I mean, it shows a lot of artistry. It really does. Instead of just, like, covering it straight yeah, out how it was. Instead of, like, and, anyway, sure. here's Wonderwall, and you sound exactly like that. You know what I mean? Like... Do something do you, do different. you play Wonderwall? Absolutely not. <laughs> I will not do Wonderwall. I try not to do Wagon Wheel unless my baby sisters ask for it. Yeah. And Friends in Low Places is absolutely awesome. Yeah, those those are not on my list either. We can dig deeper and do better. I've got a... Uh, so, a couple years ago, I started doing $20 tip if you want to hear Wonderwall. <laughs> or not Wonderwall, Wagon Wheel. Dude, that's a hell of a way to make money. It though. worked, because then people yeah. would be like, well, I've only got five bucks. And then I would Better holler out to more the crowd... Friends. Like, hey, this guy needs fifteen dollars. He wants to hear Wagon Wheel and goes grabs gets dollars here and there and then for now I got twenty dollars in tip jar, but it's not bad. Uh, I think people caught on to it because I don't ever get requested to play it, <laughs> which I am more than okay with. Like I don't wanna I don't wanna play it anyway. If they ask for it by Old Crow Medicine show, then I'll think about it. Sure. But if they like mention Darius <laughs> I won't do it. Can you play that Darius Rucker song? No. Oh, God. Bob Dylan wrote it. Old Crow sang it. Mm-hmm. Darius ruined it. That's what I say. I said this, I say the same thing, and everyone, like... It's nothing personal like against that. Hootie. It's just, I don't... I can't. I think it was better with Hootie. Yeah. I think he I really... Stayed. Yeah. should have stayed at Hootie. But, you know... Maybe he'll go back. Have, like, a... Well, did they... I don't even know why their band broke Chris up. Gaines kind of movement. I don't know. Oof. Would you call that a success? I don't know. I've been looking for a Chris Gaines t-shirt for so long. <laughs> Chris Gaines and the smoking armadillos. That's oh, we're on a hunt now. I'm looking for. We're on a hunt. Absolutely. I'm going to be on eBay all afternoon <laughs> while I'm at my baby shower just looking for a Chris <laughs> Gaines shirt for you. <laughs> my wife would be like, what are you doing? I'll, I'll be right back. See, that's like my favorite thing to do is before I play a Garth song, I'm just like, here's a Chris Gaines tune. <laughs> 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 Nobody crazy. knows. Huh? Yeah. Um... My buddy Eric uh, played the pedal steel. I don't mm-hmm. know if you've, you've seen any photos of us or anything like that, but um, with with the Ruthless West. Okay. Um, but he has been on the hunt for a 1990s Judds, the Judds mm. t-shirt. I've seen. 
he finds them, but the problem is, he goes, everyone I find is double XL. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, he, I don't know if all their fans were just I large, have, but... I have a hoarding pro, like, a slight problem when it comes to, like, 90s, 80s country tees. Yeah. Like, He's got a lot. Tax return is coming pretty soon. <laughs> Might be hitting <laughs> eBay. It's bad. Like, oh I bet I gosh. probably have, like, 20 or 30 of them. Just... Oh. I, uh, I had to get rid of a lot of my band shirts. Never. I, I just get, they get so... I still got the ones from, like, Hot Topic in high school. Oh, my goodness. Like, the Screamo bands. So... It's not a phase. I'm probably going to regret getting rid of all, all of them. I'm sure I will. It's like, oh, yeah. man, I used to have that shirt and everything like that. But at one point, like, I noticed I was growing out of them. <laughs> and not in the good way. I was like, man, I'm getting a little soggy around the midsection. <laughs> so, it's like, I should probably move up to large. And so then all these medium shirts sat in my sat in my closet for a while my wife was like are you gonna do anything with those and I think they're either in a tote or they went made it to Salvation Army or something like that but if they're in a tote you let me know I will I will <laughs> I'll keep you posted if I ever get rid of them I'll just say hey give me your address I got some mm-hmm. mail to you you like what's Hell this yeah. band no Heck you probably yeah. already know that's good stuff no those t-shirts they'll take your money I did walk into Salvation Army once and saw my own T-shirt hanging on the shelf. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, that's when you know you've arrived, right? When when people did, are giving away your shirts." Did you buy it back? I actually I didn't because what I thought it'd be funny to see if I see some see random somebody person. Else went, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, wearing my shirt, but I don't know. I I've done seen that yet. a couple times. Find some like old random band tees yeah. in Goodwill or something, yeah. and I'm just waiting for someone like the Beard Band is one of them, and I'm trying to like figure out where that's at that's awesome i'm not sure if it was purchased in tennessee or in south dakota so yeah i just wear you gotta do it man yeah band t-shirts are it's a thing especially when you're into music and you go to shows there's two things i get it's either a hat or a shirt Mm -hmm. and a vinyl whenever i'm at a show like i always get a vinyl um it's it's a it's a memento but it's something awesome too you know i don't know but i'm trying to do some recording and I've been thinking about putting. There's no. I don't know about CDs. I'm not sure about. I think how they're I feel. done. I think so too. But I, mean, I really want to sell cassette tapes. They're coming I back, love man. Cassettes. It's weird that it's weird that cassettes are the thing that comes back. I don't know if people just. I got. I don't know what it is. I don't. I don't know. Like I get vinyl they sound, making a comeback. Yeah. It's cool. It's sleek. It sounds yeah. great. But cassettes, man. <laughs> <laughs> just trashy What's... enough that it's classy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> just enough Billy yeah. Ray Cyrus to feel cool. Oh, dude, I got so many good cassettes. Like, my grandma goes to, bless her heart, goes to the Goodwill. She's, like, on it. Like, she finds yeah. something Goodwill. She's there. Like, <laughs> and she's always looking for, like, old button-up T-shirts for me and then cassettes. That's the two things that she looks for. Wow. She's found some gold. Like, I got the Marlboro Country mixtapes and, like, Shut all, up. like, the old Shell truck stop mixtape. Like, oh. every, it's, dude, it's so sick. I forgot they did those. And the old, like, a bunch of, like, um, Kyle Evans tapes and, mm-hmm. like, old cowboy, like, Ian Tyson. Some, like, I mean, it's awesome. Holy cow. Grandpa and and you dig it, you just because uh, cassettes are same yeah. as vinyl. You you hit play and you can't you flip, flip it. forward. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you gotta flip it over and mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe maybe that's why I don't know. It's like vinyl on the road or something like it that. Could, yeah, <laughs> something like you got that. a Walkman. Do you get a Walkman? Oh, no, like a I won't go that far. Man. No, <laughs> the old school '80s <laughs> yeah. headphones. Maybe I should. Giant antennas yeah. sticking out of them. Poke that through a cowboy hat or something. And, and you snap a photo of yourself in that, and there's your cover album. Mm-hmm. Man. There's the cover of your your yeah. album. Why has it got to make sense? That's, That's my question. Lately. Is that going to be the title of the <laughs> album? Know. That's a great title. That's good. I think that's just how you should live life. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your songwriting because uh, you've been doing that for a while. Yeah. And uh, what first prompted you to want to start writing? Uh, I don't know. Yeah? When I was little, I don't know. I think I would always like rhyme. Mm-hmm. Like writing poems and stuff like that. Like, I started playing piano when I was little, too. So, like, the two kind of just always, I don't know, felt good together. Sure. Like, I don't know. But I never really got serious about it till like, I was in high school. Like, okay. Like, tried getting a little more serious. I didn't play anything out until I was, like, oh, I think I was, like, 16 or 17 or something like that. Okay. But, yeah. I don't know. Huh. It's a new thing for me at the same time. Like... I've been writing for a long time, but like sharing it with people is relatively new. How long? How long ago did you start sharing? Like just playing your stuff out, playing stuff out. Oh, I think I was. 
I want to say I was out of high school. I was like in college the first time I played out. Which isn't that long ago. No. I mean, I'm I'm 35 now. Yeah, I'm, I'm 24. So see, like, okay, yeah. so that's not that long ago no. at all. I think it was like I sang, I wrote a tune for my buddy who shipped off to basic training. Like, um, and I sang that song that following fall, like the state fair. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time I played out, and I was just a nervous wreck. Like, super, I mean, like, that's like your baby, you know? Like, if someone, like, says something bad about it and you're at, like, the fragile age of 18, you're, like, just going to crumble and just be done with it. Like, <laughs> Man, your baby's ugly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I don't know. Yeah. But, like, so, yeah, but it's it's been cool growing a little more confident in, like, what you write and, like, and what you write about. Like, that's the cool thing about songwriting. Like, you can't hide anything that's going on in your life. If yeah, you're you actually really writing about the right stuff, you can't hide anything. You yeah. really can't. Yeah, you can sit down and try to think of a concept. Oh, I want to write a song about A, B, or C. That's not the good, and those it, aren't the good mean, ones. You're going to write that song, but yeah. it's not going to be no. versus, hey, I this is right from my gut. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like something you feel and get into. Yeah, like if, if you're writing that way, yeah. It, yeah, do those songs, when those songs come out of here, are they usually sad and depressing? They can be. Yeah. They can be. I mean, sometimes they they just flat out suck to write because, like, you got to put yourself emotionally <laughs> in that it. place. Like, And then if people like it, you have to relive it every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It's it. like, yeah, shit, i got to be depressed for a couple more days and finish mm. this song and then. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. Dude, it's a weird, like, I don't know. So why do you do it? Crazy. Why do you do it then? If, if, why? In, yeah, I mean, what, what makes you want to do it? I don't know. I I think I have to. Like, that's how I express myself and how how I, I don't know. I don't know. I uh, really do you think you could know. stop? I don't think I you could. Think you, you don't think no, you could ever just no. like, hey, I'm... My notes, like, in my phone, like, I just always am thinking about things. Like, yeah. Like, in a songwriting, like, mindset, I guess. Like, sure. Every little thing. So, like, my note, I like, I got, like, thousands of notes. Yeah. Like, just little, like... Little thoughts here and there. Little thoughts here yeah. and there. Yeah, like... I don't know. I don't think I could stop, though, because I think it's always been my, like, out. Like, mm. some people can work out. Some people, you know, like, we all have our things. Yeah. Like, but that's mine. Like, I can't express much any way else. I don't know. I don't know. I, I definitely get that. Yeah. Absolutely. When I was, uh, when I was in middle school, I uh, was in, really into drawing. Okay. And I... Uh, always I, been jealous of people that can draw. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd say I was into drawing... I got I got pretty good at it because I, I did it a lot and the more yeah. you do something the better you get absolutely um, and I ended up having a uh, like my own comic strip it was pretty cool <laughs> that is <laughs> me and dope. a couple of buddies we each had our own comic strips with our own characters and uh, and yeah I would express tons of stuff through that just like I would create a create a story that would be these characters going through whatever it was I was feeling at the time yeah you know and we got really geeky one time <laughs> and made this giant comic strip where all of our characters were met each other and the universes were it was super <laughs> weird but mine was called Animal Wild it's a and my show. my main character was an armadillo okay so it was I like it I don't know why I just thought it was cool but and uh but then as I got older it became more into just writing and uh short stories and then poems and yeah. now songs you yeah. know it just kind of faded into that you know and it's still all all art there's um, still yeah it's it's still putting thoughts on paper. Yeah. 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 And it's cool. I mean, I don't think I could ever not write songs. Yeah. I mean, I, I have moments where I slow down, and I don't write as much as I used to. But uh, sure enough, you know, I, you give me a, a few minutes of my guitar, it's going to come right back up, and I'm mm-hmm. putting my own words to something. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But that's how it should be. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I like it. No song, I don't know. That's the thing, like... Don't really know what else I'd do. Yeah, because I don't think I could stop writing. So. Do you have interest in anything else? As far as like, because you, you you're going at it. Are you have you been down in Nashville? Are you trying to get down there? Or? Oh, I'm yeah. I'm gonna head back there like, and I don't know. Trying to do that within the next month or two. Okay, so you're looking at trying cold. to make this like a career. This is what yeah. I do and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. Could you see yourself doing anything else? Like, is there anything else that interests you? I'm yes. Actually, okay. I mean, like. So I'm just trying to play music, make some money, buy some cows, and tell the world to leave me alone. That's what that I'm trying to do. That is a glorious, glorious dream. So <laughs> <laughs> that's all Later. I want in life. Um, so yeah, that's my other interest. 
Some people call that paradise. I do. <laughs> like, yes. I'm one of those people, Heath. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, it's so that's the, that's another thing too when it comes to um, any, it, just anyone pursuing a dream or whether it's songwriter or anything like that, realizing when you've achieved it and not overdoing it. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Like, because if you sudden get get success, you get that and like that, and then you keep going, then all of a sudden you're you're you've bypassed what you were doing it for all along. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I haven't had that success. I can't tell you that. <laughs> but you'd sure like to know what it feels I, like. I would love to know. Yeah. I hope I can answer that. Do you someday. got a place you'd like to settle? Like a location? Is oh yeah, I'll come here? back to the hills. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This um, is where I like to be, and that's the thing too. Like. I've, my big thing lately has been, like, I can't get comfortable yet. Hmm. If I stayed out here, I would get comfortable, and I couldn't leave. Like, I love it out here more than anything. Oh, okay, I got you. Like, this is my yeah. place. Yeah. Like, this is where I feel I don't. Like, I go across the river, I can breathe. I'm sure. Good, you know? Sure. But, like, I don't know. I can't do that yet. <laughs> You'd be completely fine with just doing nothing out here. Uh, yeah. Like, I'm good. Yeah, like, I just, I can't do that yet, I think. Like... Because I went down to Nashville the first time for school. That was my focus, you mm-hmm. know. And now I kind of want to, like, go back again and just hit it nothing but music. Like, yeah. And give that a try first and record. Like, one of my big things is I want to record, you know, sure. an album in Nashville. Get all my buddies and some different studio musicians. Like, do everything, I don't know, the way that I think that it needs to be done, I guess. Sure, like, sure. Like, get it all and then bring it back here. Like, grow sure. it there and bring it back is what I'm trying to do. Do you have buddies down there already that I'm guessing you can connect yeah. with when you get down there? And yeah. And that's the thing, too. Like, going to school, they're like, I feel like I'd be wasting all my time and connections, I guess, if I didn't go back down. Because I have a lot of friends that are all doing their thing and finding their success. And mm-hmm. I'm a little jealous. Yeah, and a lot of it, <laughs> a lot of it's proximity. Yeah, you know? it if is. If you're around it, exactly. it well, happens. That's the cool thing about, like, it's all about finding, like, your community, like... Sure. You know, like, people that are all trying to do the same thing, and I don't know. Yeah. I guess. No, I... I, Got to have your crew. Yeah. I definitely know that. I think of that every time I see a movie with the same five actors in it. I'm like, the guys are just... They're all buddies. Yeah. And they just decided to make movies together, Uh you know? and Uh Uh-huh. That's how it works. Like, the 1990s Adam Sandler movies. Exactly. (laughs) They were all the same guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that is not... Something that is easy to do up here. Um, I mean, it, I think it will be. I mean, that's, I think, yeah, no, that's it's one of growing. my goals. Is, that's the thing. Yeah. It's cool how, like, I can't play hardly anything, like, around Sioux Falls. Like, there's not a lot to play. Like, but you come out here, like, the scene is growing, and it's so, so cool. Yeah. Like, I love to see that there's so much more live music. and Yeah, the, every every weekend there's live music in yeah. multiple places around yeah. the hills. Um, there's a bunch of different music events that happen, um, a bunch of different music or- organizations as well, and venues. Yeah. Like the venues That's what keep I mean. getting it's... bigger and bigger, mm-hmm. you know? Um, That's why I got to go down, record some music, and bring it back, <laughs> get back here. The sooner I go, the sooner I get back. Well, you know, it. there are people up here that can do that for you, but... It's true. There's something about that, though. There's something about being able to say, like, d- there's right just now, something about Nashville recorded artists, like, people dig that sound... I don't know. It's easy to market. I think, too, you got to go, like, where you're inspired. Like, it's pretty cool. Like, I don't know. I feel like some kind of different energy when you're there a little bit, too. Like In Nashville? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's, you got to check it out, man. (laughs) I don't know. Like, and I'm not huge on the city. Like, I wouldn't go to any other place. Yeah. Like, city-wise. I hate cities. No, is it... um, do you spend most of your time down there? Is it like the East Nashville or is it like the the uh, um, strip? Is there's a strip like obvious strip with yeah like Main Broadway Street and, okay. yeah yeah. Um, yeah Broadway has like all like the covers and like all the cover bars and whatnot with the bands and then like Demumbrian is getting a bunch more like writers rounds which are really fun to play okay um, and then I don't know you get over to like Midtown and you'll get some more covers and whatnot but there's still some good venues just kind of all throughout that you can just plug away at like Mm. which is kind of fun that's cool so that's cool the big thing though with that is just it's it's a good place to be for songwriting i guess is my thing yeah it definitely i mean it they're all over i mean everyone working is also a songwriter you know you're not doing that's a singer and server yeah (laughs) right for hire exactly um 
Do you think that location influences how a song is written? Like, or do I you think, think it's kind people? of like all? De- it all depends on the person. I think some people like. I don't know. Like one of my favorite songwriters, Tom Russell, lived in New York City, and the man is writing songs about like cowboys out in Arizona. Yeah. Like, Geographically speaking, that makes no sense. What are you doing, He's man? a taxi driver in New York City, and he's writing songs about cowboys. Jeez. Like, some people can do it. But I think I think that, like, where you're at can... I mean, I don't know. I guess it just all depends on the person. Yeah. For yeah. me, it kind of does. Like, I don't know. Like, how so? I think it all depends, like... I don't know. You write a lot about your surroundings. So, like, what's around you influences what's going to go in the song, I feel like. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, you know, like descriptions of places and terminology or whatnot. I don't know. Yeah, like if you're trying to write a song and you're trying to paint a setting, yeah, which people do in songs all the time. Uh-huh. A lot of songs start out that way. Yeah. You know, you're, you're usually you're grabbing that imagery from what you look at as yeah. you're putting the song together. Exactly. You know, that makes sense. I was just kind of thinking because when you think of – Nashville and the songs that come out of Nashville, and then if you you know flip the coin and think of how what songs are coming out of Austin, yeah, very different feel, yeah. very different sound. Absolutely. Um, I mean, to to the average person, probably not. It all probably sounds similar, but to someone that oh, spends a lot of time difference. listening yeah. to music, like no, it is not the same it, yeah, stuff at all. Um, and I was just kind of wondering, like, I wonder why. That is, if it's just, just if it's the people or that make up those yeah. areas, or if it's the actual location itself, it just gives you a different feel. That could be. Maybe it's something spiritual coming out of the out of the ground. <laughs> it's what's in the water. <laughs> it's yeah. in the water. I'm not sure. That's yeah. the thing. Like, sorry is just a funny deal. Well, and know. even like Seattle and and Portland. And that's like, a whole other vibe. Whole up different there. songs coming yeah. out of there. You know. Yeah. And, I don't know. Yeah, I think geography has a lot to do with it then. I mean, yeah. when you look at it like that. I wonder what everyone that... Everyone just has a different vibe. Yeah. Different pace of life. I don't know. I think it all plays a factor. I wonder what people would say about Black Hills music. Like, what kind of vibe it gives off. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Give us 50 years. We'll have yeah. an answer. We'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, so you play mostly you play mostly originals at your shows. I'm trying um, to. Okay. Do you get a pretty good uh, response from all that? Uh, sometimes. Yeah? Yeah. Is it hit or miss? Yeah. Like I, any, I think like it all depends gig, on the crowd. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I try to do originals, but then, like, when you're playing, like, a couple hours at the bar or whatnot, you got to do the Garth Brooks and like, yeah. all that stuff. Well, and, th- and those are your, uh, I guess, what's your top five go-to covers? Top five go-to like covers? Like, if you had, hey, these are these are covers <clears> I usually <throat> play at every show. Uh, oof. That's tough. Or maybe artists. Artists? Yeah. Well, okay, so I like a lot of, like, like the, um, like we were talking about, like, Tom Russell. Like yeah. The Tonight We Ride is one of my favorite ones I don't to know play. if, I, I keep thinking of, I'm probably thinking of someone else. It's probably not, I don't know if I know Tom Russell. I'm going to check him out when You're we You're going to have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Indians, Horses, and Cowboys, that album will change you. Okay. <laughs> Noted. I'll kick it um, on at the baby shower. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then, I don't know, I like, um... I don't know, I do a lot of, like, the... I'll do some David Allen Coe, some Tyler Childers. Mm-hmm. Like, the folkier kind of stuff I okay. really get into doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I do a lot of... One of my, like, absolute favorite, though, is uh, George Strait, the um, You Look So Good in Love. Oh, that's a great tune. He does a little talking part at the end, and I don't really like talking all that much, so I just wrote another verse. And nice. And slapped her on there. and Which you are free to do. Yeah, which absolutely. Is, which is, <laughs> the great part of being a musician. You Absolutely. can do whatever you want. It's my own interpretation. I added a verse to um, Reckless Kelly's Seven Nights in, in Ire. Absolutely. And I wrote it for our Irish pub in here, <laughs> here in Spearfish. And so whenever I play there on Patty's Day, I always add it to it. Absolutely. Great, you but, have to. Yeah, it's fun. Mm-hmm. You know, it keeps it going. But. Exactly. Um, yeah, so uh, so you you play your originals... Uh, it's kind of hit or miss depending on the crowd. When the crowd's into them, um, tell me a little bit about what that feels like. Like when you're playing your own stuff, makes it worth it. Yeah. Like, like last night, last night I felt like it was a pretty good show. Like I walked off the stage feeling good and like, just one of those where like, 
you needed that kind of thing. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and where were you at again? At the Loud last The Loud night. and Sturgis. Yeah. Okay. But I played, I just sat down in my little folding chair. I found like a wooden folding chair at my grandma's house, and I said, that looks like a guitar playing, harmonica playing chair. So Sweet. That's my, you got to have a strong chair game. Yeah. You, you got to have a, a setting yeah. on stage. That's I've what been, I mean. I've been so learning like, that yeah, more and you're more. You're set, like, feeling comfortable up there is the big thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, like, last night, I think, felt so good, because I have my chair, I have my cooler next to me with, like, all my harmonicas and my drinks, and just sitting down playing, not worrying about anything. Like, I was just comfortable. Oh, that's the way like, to do it, man. Yeah, so then, and then that's, and I think that's what leads to, like, a good show. Like, I don't know, it felt good. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually an interesting thought, is... Like, if you don't feel good, it's not going to sound good, probably. It's almost like having props yeah but it, it sets the set it sets the stage for you and it yeah. sets the stage for how for what everyone can kind of expect to feel yeah you know and that's the thing like yeah and it just it felt good to sing comfortable and i think it allows you to like connect with people yeah it all goes back to connection nobody wants to do that no more and in, and in any level of of music of show there's always some type of stage setting i went and saw uh, jason isbel at red rocks Last year, two years ago, mm-hmm. um, but that was pretty nice. Oh god, <laughs> that guy! I don't know. I, I keep people keep asking me who's your favorite, you know, based on you know years and generations and stuff. Uh, he's a hard one to beat. Yeah, I just love the way he writes, man. But he, they had a. This was when they were doing. Um, I forget what the name of the album was, which album it was the day, because they, they played a bunch of songs from a bunch of different albums, mm. which when you have a career that good, you can. Yeah. But they had, like, stained glass church windows hanging up behind That's them. That's pretty sick. And it just made, gave you this sense, like, I'm I'm in, I'm in awe, yeah. you know? Like, when yeah, I was yeah, yeah. a little kid, and you walk into a big church yeah. building, you know, and you're... Uh-huh. Oh my goodness! Like you this feel like you need to be reverent. You yeah, know? yeah. This is important. I yeah. should pay attention. Yeah, um, yeah. And I don't. I don't really have that with my stage. I should probably figure out what that is for <laughs> me. You know, but it's yeah. I think your set plays a big deal into it. Like what your that's a good idea. What's around you? Yeah, yeah. When it's just an empty stage and you up there, it's hard to. I can see where it'd be hard for people to take notice. Yeah. You know, there's nothing standing out or eclectic enough to... Catch an eye kind yeah. of thing, yeah. Now, some stages have it already. Yeah. Like absolutely. Flanagan's Pub here in town, their sta- the stage is set up kind of... It has that feel when yeah. you're up there already. Uh, but uh, when you play at the like at the Grand at Santana, it's just a big open stage. Yeah, it's just open. Yep. So you could kind of do whatever you, you want. You have to, yeah. yeah it's yeah. a good idea. Look at that. Look I at found that. like an old... Uh, I worked at a boot store when I was going to school, and I found like an old like women's Wrangler jeans like like frame, I guess <laughs> like big ad. And on the other side, I like so I took it off the wall, and like the other side, I painted it like a chalkboard. So I put like the Tyler David and like logo and everything, like uh-huh. just trying to make it look all official. So I propped my little Wrangler sign up there <laughs> so next to my guitar case. You still got it, right? Oh yeah, nice. absolutely. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Um, what about uh, the songs of yours that you like to play the most? Do you have like do you have favorites? Yeah, I like, think so. Honestly, I think I don't know. The favorite always changes. It's always like the last song you wrote. Like you're always like super pumped about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people. Tell so me there's that. always that. Yeah. But like yeah, I have like my favorites like that. I'll like start with or end with like my one song scenic route. Um, I don't know. It talks about like. Well, this one's our last song. Like, thanks, y'all. Have a safe drive home, kind of thing. So, like, it, it's like the ender, sure, kind of thing. Sure. It's somewhere up tempo, jammy. So, I don't know. Like, I love playing that one, and I don't know. I love most of the songs that I'll play like in open tunings. I guess I can get into as well. You do open tunings? Oh yeah. Really? I'm a horrible guitar player, so I gotta cheat a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing, yeah, nothing fancy about my picking, just open. I haven't used open tuning in years. Um, oh, man. I mean, this is back when I was trying to do Goo Goo Dolls covers. This was a long open time C ago. Open C and Open D are your friends for that, then. It brings yeah, it way down. They are. <laughs> they absolutely are. Um, yeah, the most I'll ever change now when I'm on stage is a drop D. Yeah. But that's it. Everything else is standard. You know? Yeah. 
No, you're lucky to find a guitar of mine that's in standard tuning. Really? To be honest with you. Well, good to know. If anyone's ever comes <laughs> yeah. to your show and says, hey, do you want to go up and play? You, you, you might you're have not going to know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just grab it. Oh, crap. Yeah, exactly. That's funny. That's funny, man. So, um, yeah, open tuning. Okay. So like there's you. a lot different about your shows. You can get a little artsy with it. Yeah. Yeah. You can get some get some weird sounds. Not weird, I guess, but it just well, it just makes it sound so much bigger when it sounds, it's open. Yeah, when it it's just you and a harmonica, you're trying to look for anything to make it sound bigger. Right. You know. That's true. And that, I think that's kind of what I'm trying to do now. Is a little more stripped down. Like I don't really have much of an interest in a big band, or mm-hmm. just keep it stripped down. And do you use loopers or anything like that? Or? I haven't. Yeah. I have a loop pedal that I'll mess with at home a little mm-hmm. bit, but I don't trust my foot enough to yeah. do that in public. It's a hard one. They've got those. It's crazy. Uh, those little stomp boards are pretty all right for some of those. Those are cool. Pedals. Those are cool. Um, a buddy of mine uses those, but he uh, also uses a a bass drum. Yeah. And he uses well, it with yeah. his foot. He has a whole thing. You know, I'm trying like, to get into the whole bass drum tambourine thing. Oh, we'll that's hard, See how man. that goes. But I'm always like tapping along like when I'm sitting in the chair and whatnot or like stomping, so I'm like... Maybe I should just stomp on something that's going to make noise. Yeah, and you think that, but see, when I try to it do it... It could be weird. Like, I don't know. It's much harder when when you have to do it in time. Oh, yeah. And, oh, I know and, I'm just going to be sitting in my room for like a week just not doing a damn awful. thing but that's playing it. guitar. and. No one's seen Tyler for months. Yeah, yeah he's still in his room. Yeah. <laughs> he asked us to bring him in some whiskey every now and then to keep him alive. Exactly, but. yeah. <laughs> the essentials. Yeah, I have mm. my... Uh, I've got some like studio monitors and some headphones and all that and trying to get into like making a couple demos and whatnot. So yeah. I'm going to hibernate and not be around for like a month just trying to freaking do that, I bet. <laughs> just going to be lost. Well, you see what you can do, uh, which is nice with today's technology, is while you're doing all that, when you get something that's fairly good or you know decent to the point where you like it, you can yeah. flop up on a live Facebook Live or something yeah. like that. And yeah. Here's what I've been working on the past week. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. You can kind of still... Keeping people's minds. Exactly. You know I mean? Yeah. Which is weird that it's come to that. Like, if you're not on and social media. And I don't know how I feel often, about that. Yeah. I, ha- like, my social medias are under a folder labeled cancer. <laughs> like, I can't stand them, but I also, like, it's a weird deal. You can't, need it. You can't, you need it at the same time. So, like, you can't get off of it. But, like, I hate it. I, I really have do. Debated so many times on just getting rid of. All of it. I just, I, it sucks yeah. so much time away. But then I think about like, what, what, what would I, what would I, how would I promote? You yeah, know? especially with the songwriters. That's group. the crappy uh, thing. Yeah, you're kind of stuck. You are, <sighs> unfortunately. Yeah, unless you hire a social media manager to do it for you. Yeah, but that's expensive. Well, yeah, it is. It <laughs> is. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Social media is a, it's a battle. It's a bitch, man. Because I don't but... like messing with like, and that's the thing too. Like, for writing. I almost, like, I think people are almost putting too much stuff out. Like, why don't you harbor some stuff? It, like, I don't know. You have to have something, like, that people haven't heard, I guess. Like, yeah. you got to have some stuff, like, on deck that, like, when you put an album out or something that no one's really heard this yeah, one. Yeah, it's all new like, stuff. We like, it's one, you can play it out live, whatever, but, like, I don't, I don't understand yeah. recording everything. <laughs> like, everybody wants quantity. Hey, like, here's all the songs you all have been hearing yeah, for the last six months. Yeah. In one place. On one, yeah, exactly. Like, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah. So I think sometimes in that sense, like, social media ruins, like, That's a good the point. process of it, I That's guess. That's a good point. Yesterday I was I was working on a a, a graphic I was going to post about, um, it was just a lyric graphic of a song I finished the other day, and I was going to put, like, just a lyric on there, mm-hmm. you know, and put, like, new song coming out. Yeah. And I got the whole graphic done, the lyrics up there, I liked the way it looked, and I said, this is stupid. <laughs> You know, so it's like, I'm I've not doing that. this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing this. So I don't know. And I think it's part of it's because I feel maybe it's just because I feel old or I feel like it's dumb. Like, why am I wasting my time doing this when it's just it feels like a like a popularity grab or it feels like an attention grab. Yeah. You know, like, I hey, look, come look at me real quick. And, yeah. Which is what social media is. So and that's what market. Yeah. yeah. It's what it is. Yeah. But you still feel weird doing it, man. You do. Like, unless someone like, I'm, I love when something happens organically. So like if someone comes to my show and they really like my song and they go and they find it and they tell people about it, yeah. that to me is like, okay, 
That's cool. That's, that's the how marketing it and be. promotion I love. Yeah. You know? But when it's me throwing stuff in people's face, yeah. I just feel weird. Plugging twenty about bucks it. into Facebook to oh, get a gosh. couple more clicks and Dude, it's all crazy. And they don't still don't show up to your show. No, <laughs> no, no. All those clicks are not. That's coming. the thing. That's and that's <laughs> the thing. Like people need to get like I think they get too caught up in the likes rather than the actual like people that come to your shows. Yep. And like I don't know, you can't and put quality. all that time. Yeah. Like if you're getting, I have a hundred likes, but then you hear your song and it's like, ah, really? That what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You know, like I don't know. Well, I think that's what it, it, people are rushing everything because it's all about getting stuff out there. Like, it's a very like demanding world. Like we all want it now, kind of yep. thing. Like, but there's some things you can't rush. I feel like. Yeah. And, well, and you think, uh, you know, I go back to Jason Isbell, like his social media, him and his wife's both. Um, most of them aren't about music. It's just no. their life, you know, random yeah. stuff like people would do anyway. Yeah. But then when they put out an album, you're like, I don't know any of these songs, you know? You hear a That's few... how it should be, like, when you listen the first time, like... Yeah. It's the best when you hear something for the first time and you got, like, your arm hairs are standing up and you're just yeah. like, what? And you sit there and you're like, oh, they've been doing stuff that I'm not aware of. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's normal. That's what people yep. do, you know? <laughs> like, if you don't hear from me for two weeks, I'm... I'm on social media, it doesn't mean I'm sitting on my couch exactly. binge watching Netflix. I mean, sometimes it means that, I guess, but yeah. like, for the most Time part, and place. <laughs> I'm doing stuff, you yeah. know. And I don't know. It's it's an interesting monster, and I don't think it's ever going to change. It's I think not, it's just it's a part of our world now, and and part of it's good because it's free to promote anything any, anymore. You know, uh, unless it you, has a price. I unless think. you pay for well, I think socially yeah. it does more like. Like yeah. in the real world, social like setting, it's it's horrible for people. Nobody wants to talk to anybody. Like yeah. nobody wants that connection anymore. Have you they ever posted something and then gone into public and just felt like I shouldn't have posted that? Like that's yeah. super weird. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll uh, when we've uh, all when done it, that. Oh gosh, when it all first became a thing, um, this was I don't know I don't remember. I remember when. Facebook started. So here's me getting talking old now. Was Tom your friend? <laughs> Tom was my friend. Still is. Way back when Tom and I were friends. Oh man. But uh uh everyone was posting I guess it still happens, but everyone was posting food. Like, oh, I went out to eat, here's this cool food, you know, yeah. that and it was a cool thing. And I remember doing it a few times and every now and then I got catch myself. Like the other day, I was at a truck stop and I had this bomb, bomb breakfast buffet. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, this is gorgeous! I want to post this." And I think I did for two minutes. Like, <laughs> that was stupid, yeah. and I deleted it. I'm like, "What am I doing?" Oh, yeah. No, I oh, had that. Just eat the food. Yeah, Tina, I, eat the it? food. My mom sent me some like article about Belmont having some convocation where they were playing some F Trump song or something like that, like uh-huh. in class, like. I got a little upset about it. Like, no matter what side of politics you're on, that's not okay to, like, in a freaking educational institution, that's not okay. Like, pushing pushing aside. And yeah, it, yeah, pushing yeah. aside. Yeah. It's not a place for... I mean, that's a place for people to make their own opinions and form their yeah, own Yeah, open thoughts. debate, discuss exactly. it, talk about it, yeah. you know. You but... don't need your leader of the class playing something like that. Yeah. And I was super heated about it and, like... <laughs> You're I just ready. like I like tagged. I was like you know like crossed out the f Trump and like pointed Belmont to that word like and I was like I'm so mad like this is not okay blah blah, blah. and I like posted it on my story and then I was like that's stupid why am I doing that yeah like yeah I don't know it's don't, it's it, it's it makes, weird it makes me upset that, like that's like my first thought to bring things like yeah that's the world we live in you get angry well I, there's so many times I've commented on stuff. And I delete it before I post. I'm like, this is gonna go nowhere. Yeah, this is gonna do nothing. I've decided my social media is gonna be nothing but music and cows. That's all. That's it. That's good. That's good. It keeps things simple. And, and but if you want to know more, you gotta ask. Yeah, come talk to me. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna find out Let's have what a cup I of think coffee and have in a, a conversation. two minute com- yeah you know, mm-hmm. conversation on Facebook or anything like that. Because that's one of the things about social media too is. Yeah, we can interact with the world instantly, but, but we can can't you actually inter- you're We not, can't understand each other, man. There's yeah. zero understanding and zero communication. Few words and emojis is not oh, an interaction. It doesn't work. It's No. It's the uh um Did you grow up in church? Mhm. So, uh the story of the Tower of Babel. Okay. Uh you know, they have 
this this culture that has this incredible technology. Yeah. And they can basically do anything, and they become basically gods, and then God comes down, and yeah. they can't understand each other, and everything crumbles, right? It's like, I don't know. For me, it's like, that seems like well, we have this incredible technology, but we can't understand we each other, yeah. and we're just dividing yeah. constantly. And well, that was my thought with that. Like, after I posted that little Belmont thing or whatever, yeah. I was like, you know, if we... That was my thought. Like, I was driving when I was doing that, and, like, just on the road thinking about myself. Yeah. I was just like, you know, if we spent a little more time praying about things than taking it to social media, I think yeah. we'd have a little little better world. Just breathing and slowing down a bit. Now, do you think there's uh, there's value, like, there is some value in songwriters and politics? I mean, I think of Bob Dylan. You know, he did a ton of political I tunes. I mean, back, of course, this was back in the 60s and 70s, yeah. and that was a big thing, and songwriting... Yeah has a lot to do with, had a lot to do with that. Do you think there's a place for that in songwriting? I'm not sure. Yeah? I'm not sure. I try and steer away from it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty conservative, yeah. like, as an individual, but you do your thing. I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah, I always wonder how that how that looks and what the, where the I mean, if it, balance is yeah. for that. I guess know? if something, like, came up in a song and... I said something that was political and leaned to the right. I'm not going to apologize for it. Like it's just going to come out, and that's that's yeah. my thought and my opinion. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing too. Like, I wouldn't be so scared about sharing those opinions if it wouldn't upset everybody. Like, it's okay to have differing opinions. Not anymore, man. You get crucified. No, it's stupid. <laughs> Nobody can handle. Like, if you can't handle the opposition, then don't put yourself yeah. out there. Like it's it's like it's a weird thing anymore today to have people that disagree with you. Like how dare how how can you disagree yeah. with me? Well, because we're different people. Yeah, you know, it's know. okay. It's funny, but. Yeah, but just get... but we digress. We're gonna get into a <sighs> dirty rabbit trail here, man. People just get <laughs> butt hurt now. Yeah, it's it's everything becomes personal. Yeah, I don't get it. It's it's weird, but again, you, you people can't can't talk and can't communicate with each other. That's what it all can, comes back to. Yeah, yeah. We'd you rather can read sit there in and put nuances another comment and... on a post than. Yeah, and of talk. course, when you read that comment back, you're you're reading it with a certain slang of, you know, snottiness in the voice. And Absolutely. Maybe that's not what they're doing at all. But <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Yeah, cancer. Uh, that's what it is. That's cancer. So that's with. your folder. That's your social media folder. It's the <laughs> cancer of the world. It it'll, is. It'll lead to our destruction one day. But let's ride the train while it's I don't there. Know. I, I hope guess. I have cows in somewhere in Montana by that time. <laughs> Can't reach yeah, me. That'd be good. Yeah, that's, that's my goal. Try and find me. I want to go to Ireland. That's not a bad spot. I just want to like... be where there's no cell phone service. Yeah. Honestly. That's my thing. You want to find me? Come come. Yeah. Come over here. Yep. Yeah, that'd be... Thanks. Yeah. That's hard to find nowadays. Well, and you that's wonder, scary. too, like, is there a place you can actually get away from anything? I don't know. Maybe there is. Mm. You know, but... Um, <laughs> now we're going to get into a whole nother, like, uh, conspiracy theory. We're doing it, man. We're doing it. We're gonna. Is it flat or is it round? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Were we ever there? <laughs> so many, so many, so much evidence. Oh, jeez. It is funny how that all that happens, though. But, and, but it's and some of it's fun. Like it's fun to have those conversations. The problem is when people people take it too serious. Oh like, gosh. Like, my just thing is goof though, around. Like, why do I need to know? Like I yeah. don't need to know certain things. Like I know that I'm here and that's about all I can control. Yeah. Like I don't know. Does it affect me personally? Right now is it yeah, no. Like if the world is round or flat, I don't I don't care. Like, no, I'm good. I'm pretty sure it's round. <laughs> I don't know, but I I'd, I'd put money on it. Yeah. But anyway, science tells us, but how much traveling do you do with music? A lot. I was gonna say, like living in a small town like that, especially in that you area. Drive to go to get gigs. I mean, yeah, you're moving around quite often. Yeah. Do you? Where's, where's your? Um, do you have like a radius? Like this is kind of where I go yeah. when I can, and every it's, now and then I take a longer just, trip. Yeah. Lately, like the last couple months, it's just been Wyoming, South Dakota, and kind of going all over. And okay. I don't know. And I have family in like Sundance, so it's kind of nice to oh, nice. have like a little in between stop. Like and, crash there for the yeah, night. Yeah. And, and like in the summertime, cool. we have our cabin. Like it's in between sure. Leed and Rochford. So. Oh, cool. It's kind of like in the cool part of the hills, just nestled up there. And yeah. so it's kind of like a cool little home base in the summertime for gigging. Have you ever been to the open mic in Rochford on Sundays? Nope. Dude. Um, 
bunch of old guys. Yes, I need to though. Bunch of old guys get together at the bar there, and that's my kind of scene. It's it's pretty sweet. All right, like it's one of those like hill, um, hill folk music. Everyone just jamming, everyone taking turns doing yeah. some flat picking, and it's Absolutely. it's pretty sweet. Even just to go and watch, yeah. dude. And they're always cool with people coming up and joining in with them. Like it's, yeah, it's fun. I like it's, that. It's really fun. Those are the kind of places I like to sit down with a beer and a harmonica and just yep. chill. Yep. You just before you know it, it's a Sunday yeah, fun day. And exactly. You're calling into work on Monday morning. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've never done that. No. But, no. Um, do you ever get out, go east from Canton? Um, a little bit. Yeah, I'll dip into Iowa. Um, Canton's right on the border of Iowa, so okay. it's it's pretty easy to get into there too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I like driving west. I love driving west, so I try and do that. Do you ever look into uh, like being an opener for some bigger acts coming through? Like I'm thinking, like when they come through like yeah. Omaha or yeah. places like that. Well, and that yeah, and that all takes content, and that's that's you true. Know what I mean, it does. So, like, they want to hear it. Yeah, yeah. That's so true. that's why I really want to go and record an album and get something done there. Yeah, but, absolutely. And they 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 don't want a demo. They want like no. a full. And I don't want to send them a demo. Yeah, like right. it, I don't know. I want to send them the best stuff that I can, and I yeah, know. that's the thing too. Like, I feel like I'm just finally like finding the direction that I want to go, like the sound that I'm trying to shoot for. Like, it's taken me. I've played guitar since I was like ten, uh-huh. and it's taken me until now to figure out like what yeah sound I'm trying to do. Like, yeah, I don't know. This is what I'm looking for. Yeah. This is... So like at the same time, like I'm happy that I don't have those demos and whatnot to send. Like I don't have that content yet. Like, yeah. I haven't recorded anything big. Like just been sitting on 30, 40 songs and Yeah. And don't do a double through. album. Nah. <laughs> might as well might as well hang on to them for another year. Uh, you yeah. know, why not? Yeah. You got three yeah. or four for years of albums I'll there. Make a little more. Yeah. Before you know it, you got yourself a career. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's cool. Well, I mean, and I first heard you last October at the Songwriters Festival in Deadwood. Yeah. And, I mean, I'd, I'd heard, I guess I'd say first time I'd heard, first time I'd seen you play, you know, I'd heard you on, on Facebook with a few things you put up there, but there wasn't much. That was one of the things, like, when Craig told me about you, I was like, well, let me look it up here. And I was like, I thought maybe, like, one or two songs, mm. if that. No. I but it sounded good. I was like, yeah. yeah like I, I've been trying to take a bunch of stuff down actually recently really just like taking off old videos taking stuff off spotify and like itunes and all that like just starting fresh yeah there's value in that there is there's a lot of value in that yeah and i think as an artist like you only want to i mean every song is a good song that you're like you need to write everything like it makes sense but like i don't know i think a little more putting out like not so much quantity, just like make it all good. Yeah, and I don't know. Yeah, so when any, whenever anyone finds your stuff, you they, know it's they're running be a across something recording. that you're proud of. Yeah, right. like because there's certain things like when I look back like a couple years ago of like videos, I'm like, oh, I don't really like that anymore. <laughs> Why the hell do I have that haircut? Yeah, like things yeah. like that. Like, God, what am I? What am I wearing? Yeah. I found this photo. What the are other you day. doing? <laughs> <laughs> I played for a wedding years ago. God, five, six years ago now. And someone posted a photo of the rehearsal, and I'm in gray low top Converse shoes. Hell yeah! With khaki shorts <laughs> and a shirt, and I'm sitting down, and I have like this goatee and short hair, and uh-huh. it's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and then, you know, it's someone else's photo, so I can't yeah. do anything about you it. You nothing. know, I'm like, well. It's it's up there. <laughs> All right. Feel free to find that. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's 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 it exists. No, but it that's yeah. Exists. So I've just been trying to like clean stuff out and it's all got to fit. Like the whole vibe has to fit like from your socials to your music that you put out, like what you're like it all has to make sense. Yeah. I guess like uniform. Like it doesn't have to make sense like it's got to belong together. But it just has to go together. Yeah. Yeah. You can't have yeah. a yeah, I I absolutely know what you mean. It's, yeah. People have to know whenever they come across you or anything of yours online, there's going to be a, f- a certain v- feeling with it yeah. that lets you know I'm interacting with Tyler David. You know? I'm just trying to appeal to hippies and cowboys. That's the only... It worked for That's Willie, it. man. I, exactly. <laughs> it worked for Willie. Stick with what works. He's so kicking, <laughs> dude. Uh, he's my all-time favorite. I think the THC is the only thing keeping him alive. Oh, dude. It'll keep him alive forever. My, I'm convinced. My buddy... Um, 
my old roommate, I was down visiting um, him a couple weeks ago, and he got to go. So he had like Willie had his big birthday party in mm-hmm. Nashville, and Max got to go on his bus with him and everything. Oh, this sweet. man hires the guy. He just sits there and rolls. That's all. That's his whole job. Just sit there, roll on Willie's reserve. That's it. He's literally hired to sit on that bus. Kindergarten. What not do you want to do? Be when you grow up, sir. I want to roll Willie's joints. <laughs> I mean, okay. I bet it's a pretty lucrative business. I bet he does all right. I bet he does more than all right. Yep, and he's he got some okay. damn good stories. Oh, my <laughs> gosh, dude. That's a guy yeah. I need to find. Let's have a chat with that dude. I'll get a third microphone. You and I will just sit and talk with him. Toby Keith is a fool. Why would you never do that with Willie again? I don't I don't get it. Toby Keith? Yeah. What, what do you mean? The whole, like, I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. I feel like whenever that man calls you. To go hang out. I didn't know he said that. Did he say that? Is that a song? What? You didn't know that? No. I haven't listened to Toby Keith in years, man. (laughs) Like, it's been, it's been years. It's an old song. (sighs) Told you how much I, I never got into him. Never really did. Like, there was, I couldn't even tell you some of his older songs that I, that I liked. Like, (laughs) it wasn't really my, my thing. But, uh, um, that's, that's a dumb move, man. I, I would get it. say Lost yes. All my respect, right there. Anytime, anywhere. <laughs> you know, like yeah, absolutely, of course. Let's do yeah. it. Pick me up. Yep. <laughs> Be right there, man. Uh, his uh, his Willie's Reserve is is pretty pretty good too. I'm a I'm a fan of that. He's all over the place. Mm-hmm. He's just a businessman. He he's got it. He's got it figured out. <laughs> um, I saw him when he came up to Deadwood years ago for the Roll Me Up and Smoke Me tour. Yeah. <laughs> so, I actually got him. He signed my poster. That's pretty sick. Yeah, I got a framed signed poster of Willie Nelson in my living room. I saw him. I've seen him a couple times. My favorite was at um, the Pavilion. I saw him at the Washington Pavilion in Sioux Falls. Nice. And because it, it was like sit down theater, and then I forget what song it was, but just in the middle of a song, this old hippie dude, long gray beard, long hair, stands up in the middle of the crowd, pulls out his lighter. <laughs> the only <laughs> one standing, the fire marshals come rushing in. They're oh. like, what? That's like, amazing. They just let him sit there the whole song. It was great. It gets a great. lighter. Chill out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's it's funny. a Willie concert. I yeah, mean, what, what do you, you expect? What do you think's gonna happen? Yeah, <laughs> but it was good stuff. That's cool, man. <laughs> um, he did. He recorded that song with Snoop Dogg and Jamie Johnson. That's right. <laughs> which is even better, and it's awesome because he made he made Snoop Dogg sing, not mm-hmm. rap. <laughs> he had to sing. <laughs> The I don't know if he made him do it, can, but that's what he did yeah. in the song, and it's it's super. I was the I was gonna chuckle. To get Snoop to sing, yeah. But when I when I hear that, I was gonna chuckle out of it. But isn't he like Snoop Lion now or something? He was for a while. I think he's back to to dog. Mm. I don't know. Everyone's it's the reinvention of yourself. I think. Yeah. Or what what didn't he have that like Netflix documentary? It was like reincarnated or yeah, something. Yeah, it's like the that. it was his Chris Gaines it moment was. in his it life, was. man. <laughs> I think he was just too high in Jamaica. He could have been. I think that's what it was. That wouldn't shock me. But Willie's always been Willie. He hasn't changed anything. (laughs) No. That that I'm aware of anyway. I haven't heard of. I like watching, when you watch like Willie Nelson videos from like the 50s and 60s, Mm -hmm. it's a whole nother person. Oh, yeah. It's hilarious. Oh, dude. He's all clean cut. Yeah, he's clean cut wearing a suit. He's wearing a suit. and I've got his... uh, um, Clean shave. I've got his uh, The Pamper... Demos on vinyl. It's double vinyl. That's sick. all from when he recorded with Pamper Pamper Records. Yeah, uh, back then, and it's all this old, his super old cuts of everything, and it's so great. But yeah, the photo, bad. he's all yeah. like clean cuts, yeah, sitting upright with his hands on his <laughs> on his lap, just smiling. You know, not the Willie you think Jeez. of. <laughs> this is way before the Mandana made a made a show. And then he just started doing his own thing. He did. He did. Um, yeah, we could talk about Willie all day. I'll tell you what, jeez. Um, so, what would you call? So, you, obviously, you're you're pushing into cowboys and hippies, is what you said. But do you uh, classify your music under a specific genre at all? I don't know. I mean, it's I I'd, I'd call it country. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I would. I'm not but. sure. I always, I always love asking that question just to see what. I think that's the thing, too. I think sometimes we get caught up in what we want to call it rather than just writing and singing how we feel. And Yeah. Yeah. We do. I was talking with uh, um, Randy Burkhart a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, and uh, we did an episode together, and uh, he uh, he does the Rocky Mountain country music and everything like that, and he went into all these different subgenres of country, and... 
think we just all gotta call it what it is. I got it's just lost. country. Like, yeah. Whoa, like there's like the, well, this is like, you know, Denver, Rocky Mountain, and blah blah blah, Black Hills. And like, whoa, geez, like yeah. I didn't realize there's this many, but I don't know. I, like, I don't. Is... Yeah, I don't know. I think we gotta get a little less caught up in that and just saying it. Just do what it is. Yeah. See what pe- people people like it. People like it. Who cares what genre it falls it, into? Yeah. And yeah. Like that. I don't know. That's the thing. But you have know. to put something you out there put so some people kind know of label what to on it. expect. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like people should be able to pick up what you are by what you're singing. That's true. You shouldn't have to like say what it is. Like, yeah. A lot of times they can pick it up by a photo. Like if you have a poster oh, yeah. going. It's the, all about the same vibe. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. This is what it looks it's like. Uniform. Oh, I kind of know what to expect. Yep. You know, like yeah. I see a picture of Culture Wall. I know what to expect. He ain't rapping. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not. Look, he ain't, yeah, he ain't no Slim Shady. God, that'd be kind of funny, though. I wonder if he'd ever just do it. I'd he won't, that, but yeah. it'd be cool to see. <laughs> it's like, what? He just drops and starts spitting. <laughs> oh, man. With that deep voice, that'd be kind of cool to hear. But Exactly. But yeah, you know what to expect. You can you can usually tell by the photo um, or the title. Um, yeah. Or anything like that. And and a lot of times, like, you're finding artists because you're already into that genre anyway. And that's how you discover new artists yeah. in that, you know, in that certain yeah. sound or anything Absolutely. like that. Yeah, what you listen to has a huge influence on everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, it, it matters. And it, it does. It points you out to it and everything. But and I think a lot, I don't know, I've been listening to a lot more, like, folk lately. Like, oh. a lot of, like mandolin orange kind of stuff dude did you hear like, the new album oh i've been listening just came out did it come out just this week was it yesterday yeah, it was like yesterday god yeah. i kicked it on last night while i was getting dinner going yeah. holy crap yeah. it's good like yeah god i love them i saw them at red rocks a couple years that'd ago that'd be fun oh, they were great one of my favorite things to do too though is i'll get lost on youtube just in npr like tiny desks or like different songwriter like watching people play live I love that. Yeah. Like, I can just sit there and do that all the time. Yeah. Just throw it on. And yeah. That's that's their music. It's not yeah. a Spotify playlist. It's a no, YouTube playlist. Yeah. And... I don't really, yeah, I don't need Netflix yeah. or a TV. I just right. listen to music, like, no, 90% that makes sense. of the time. It's fun, dude. It's like yeah. you're at a, sh- it's like you're, you are got your own little private show, and yeah. you kick it on. It gives but, you a certain feel. And... Yeah, but, like, from, like, a songwriting perspective, it's cool to listen to someone, like, talk about, like, what inspired them to write this song. Like, yeah. The stories, I don't know. That's what I like. Yeah. More than anything. Like Do you like, do that at rounds? Like when you play around, do you ever talk about this song came out of Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. I tr- yeah. But sometimes <laughs> not, not when like often. they're sad, depressing, like when you talk about them, you just sound bitter. So Yeah. It's like, well, everyone's bitter at some point. Oh you know? yeah. Everyone can identify to a bitter song, you know. That's why I love them. Yeah. There's true. nothing wrong with being bitter. That's true. Um I get into uh that bug on my coffee pot there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I get into um, so I just watched the Blaze the Blaze movie. Blaze I've been wa- yeah, I've been meaning to watch that. Dude, it's 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 kind of slow moving, but yeah. it's kind of gives you a feel of what his life. I would imagine it. That's kind of the feel you had. He just yeah. kind of did his own thing, and there wasn't any like climactic. Um, I don't know, like agenda. Yeah, is a better word to put it. He just he just lived, and that's what the movie tries to do. And dude, it's I envy that. Yeah. It's great. It's really, really good. But him, Towns, Van Zandt, um, John Prine, all those types of songwriters. Also, if I, if that's all I ever played at a show, be I'd be fine. happy. Man. Yeah, exactly. I'd be absolutely yeah. happy. Yeah, you know? gives me a good. Feeling. It's a whole yeah. Like, and I think those kind of songs take a whole another level of like thought. Yep. Like you have to be in a certain mindset and like, I don't know. And that's what makes them good. Yep. Absolutely. They require thought. It's not just, you know, catchy and a hook. Yeah, random random yeah. trunks truck song with beer yeah. in the yeah. in the back seat and with the tailgate. Yep. <laughs> exactly. There's not there's not enough songs like that. We need to make more. We should make a whole bunch more. Uh, I tell you what. But those are the ones that make money. Yeah. I don't know. Would you ever do that? <laughs> like, there's a question. Would you ever do that once just to, oh, just to get your cows not to and like, then walk away yeah, and you'd be stupid do whatever not you to want? Try and write a little bit and pitch some stuff. And I mean, like, I have like pitched to stuff and like. Do you feel like it's wrong with it? Giving away a part of your soul. No. Like, would it I don't know. would it fit in with the Tyler David vibe oh, you're going for? But there's a lot of people that will do that though. They're like, they'll take the writing route and they'll pitch a song and they'll find some success with that, and then they kind of create their own off of that. 
That's true. You know, like... I guess you can't. You could. Like it's I mean, not about the money, but at the end of the day, it's kind of about the money. Yeah. I don't know. You get a little bit of freedom, and then you yeah. can do what you want. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. But at the same time, like, there's a lot of people that'll chase that, like pitching songs, and it's a. I don't know. That's a whole other world. Yeah. I don't know. See, I like finding those obscure, like, quality songwriters that certain. I mean, people know about, but not a lot of people know about. Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh man. Exactly. But you ever heard of a dude named Rustin Kelly? Oh, dude. Uh, Love yeah. Rustin Kelly. He's one of my favorites of all time. Uh, he's married to Casey Musgraves. Yep. Yeah, that's right. I keep forgetting. You got all that. the music you need to listen to between the two of them. Oh, right man. There. They have kids <laughs> set. You know, they are set. Uh, I'm already no, a fan. <laughs> his, uh, his song, um, oh, what's the name of that song? Uh, so I, I love the Hollywood song. Oh yeah, Hollywood. That's, that's a great tune. Poison, a, Hurricane in My Head is. A that's banger. a great tune. Yeah, there's another one on that album though, um, where he talks about. Uh, yeah, pull it, right it up here. there. Let's, let's take I got it, it right here. Um, it's one of the first ones on there, and he one of the lyrics that he puts in that so- in that song, and just like I, I dig. Um, What's he got like wildflower poison? Black magic is black cool magic. Too. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. It, the 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 lyric in there and. It, and Blanking Black, again on it. Yeah. But. I think my favorite, though, was Anchors off the Dying Star album. Have you listened to his new one, Dying Star? Uh, once. I, I've kicked it, on, kicked it on once. I haven't sat down and actually paid attention to it yet, though. thing wrecks me. Um, yeah? <laughs> it's so good, dude. Uh, if you're sad and depressed, don't listen to it. <laughs> or maybe do. It might... Wait till you get happy yeah. and then let it bring you back yeah. down. And, yeah. If you want to um, get sad, go ahead and listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, it was the... It's uh, crazy. You better want what you wish what you wish for because it might happen. Yeah, that yeah, line yeah. in Black yeah. Magic, dude, uh-huh. that's a great line. It's like, yeah, so many people like wish they wish for something and then yeah. they get it and they're like, oh shit. I'm See, like, but uh, that guy, he did the writing thing. Like he got cuts with like Josh Abbott, I think, yeah. and, like some Texas mm-hmm. guys, and now he's doing his own. Yeah. Like, have you ever listened to the um, the Damn Quails? Mm-mm. They're out of Oklahoma, okay. I believe. Um, but uh, Whitey Morgan covered their uh, "Me and the Whiskey" tune. Yeah, and I dig their version better. I think it's. Yeah. I think it's. Well, it's it's it came from them, you know. Yeah. So it's their song, and um, Whitey made it a little bit more, um, like rough. He you know he brought in like he changed some of the lyrics and make it like I'm doing cocaine about that. Kind of <laughs> you know, it's Whitey Morgan. The Whitey touch. Yeah, he added into it, but like their version, it just I dig it. I absolutely yeah. dig it. But it's kind of cool when you see a band that of quality. And they get a song that gets cut by someone, and yeah. it, you know, goes off and everything. Yeah. So, exactly. that's is that what your is that what your goal is, or would you rather be the the one people go to listen to? I don't. I'm just. I don't know if I have a just actual doing your goal. thing. Whatever happens, I'm happens. Just trying to make a living with sure. this crazy stuff. You can do both. Yeah. Like, there's tons of people that yeah. that happen. Um, where they uh they have their own music career, and then someone else covers one of their songs too, mm-hmm. and it goes off and everything like that. But I'm just um, waiting to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good place to be. It's a good place to be, man. Uh, so you played at Loud, Loud American last night. Yeah. Tonight you were at... Dakota Point Brewery. Dakota Point Brewery, man. It's yes. a good place. Never been. I, uh, I'm excited, though. I was one of the actors in their commercial. There you go. Yeah, so Acting. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's super There's weird, dude. <laughs> it's like you just you just have to smile super big. Yeah, I and, wouldn't know what to do. Oh, they tell you. They tell you. They're like, Here, here's, a, here's a beer. Take a drink, smile big, you know. It'd be a real Ron Burgundy moment. Like, oh, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> With my hand. No, that's Talladega Nights, yeah. The Ricky great. Bobby. That would be great. Um, no, but they make they make really good beer. Um, really cool place. It's nice to see a bunch of breweries popping up around here. Yeah. There's more and more of them, especially ones that, that do music. It's pretty yeah. Neat, so. That's what I mean. There's a lot more. There's just more of a scene for it out here. Yeah, it happens. It's great. Well, get down to Nashville, get your album done, and then move out here. In like I'm 10, trying to. 10, 15 years when you're ready to settle down. And oh, I don't know if I can last 10 years in yeah, the city. It might be A couple years, maybe. Yeah. Get out here and <laughs> then uh, we'll, we'll build the culture up around here together and everything. Amen. It's going to be... I kind of I kind of think that the Black Hills are a perfect location for that. Well, the hills are like... They're the less touristy Rockies. Just like... It's just a little more like... I don't know, down home, yep. I feel like. People attached to. I don't know. Yeah. It gives you... Something it, about the hills. Yeah. It's not... We've got our own tourism, obviously, yeah. but not near the level that other places no, do. No, and that's good. That's good. Yeah. I wish they'd stop advertising so damn much. 
Yeah, secret. they keep telling, <laughs> they keep saying that. It's it a ain't going to be that good if they keep telling everybody. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> My buddy always says, uh, he goes, it sucks here. Don't ever come here. Yeah, exactly. And he just says that because he doesn't want yeah. people to, he doesn't want yeah. it to change. It's cold. Yeah. It's awful. It's, it's flat. Worst. You don't, don't want ever do nothing. It. Don't yeah. ever do it. Uh-uh. Don't ever do it. But <laughs> no. um, Where can people find your stuff if they want to find the Tyler David vibe online? <laughs> um... <laughs> I got some pretty poor uh, social medias there, <laughs> Instagram and Facebook. Um, I think I have one song left on like Spotify. Okay, but website things are in the works. Like yeah, I got a website, but there's also a rapper named Tyler David. Is there really? Apparently. Oh man. So I think there's confusion there with my web domain and URL stuff right now. So I got to figure all that out. I sense a collaboration. Oh, coming at some I point. sense no. <laughs> Tyler David X two. I mean, I could do some, like, Mac Miller covers, but because I love nothing more than some good Mac. That'd be pretty good. I could see it happening. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, things are in the works. Cool. I'm trying to get things rolling, and then you all can find it. The Tyler David cassette coming soon. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> It'll be sweet. <laughs> Dust off your cassette players. <laughs> That'll be good. That'll be good, man. Dude, thanks for coming. Absolutely. This was, thanks this for the coffee. This was fun. Thanks for... Chasing some rabbit trails with me, man. This yeah, was a fun chat. Absolutely. But that's that's what conversations do. So People need more of them. They do. They absolutely do. Yeah. We'll make it happen. Absolutely. Thanks, dude. Cheers. Cheers. That's a wrap, everyone. Once again, if you want to get a hold of me in any way, shape, or form, the best way to do that is emailing me at heath at heathbaronline.com. Or follow me on social media, Facebook and Instagram, at Heath Bar Online, or on Twitter, at Heath Johnson. We'll see you all next time, folks.